From the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel, with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents the Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Francis Salesiar. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from three donors. The first are Barbara Francis and family from Brampton, Ontario, in memory of Anthony Francis and for all her deceased family members, relatives, and friends. In thanksgiving for blessings and graces received and for the return of her family to their faith. The second are Ray and Norma Kalina Takte from Toronto, Ontario, in thanksgiving for their 45th wedding anniversary celebration on June 5th of this year, for blessings received and the gift of their two daughters, family and relatives. The third is in honor of all those in our daily TV Mass community who are unable to attend Mass of their parish. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we are gathered today, we celebrate the memorial feast of St. Ignatius of Antioch a martyr who gave his life for the faith. As we celebrate this Mass through the feast day and the liturgy of today, we are invited that at times in our own life, we may face rejection because we stand for the faith, because we proclaim the gospel. And it is natural tendency for us to be anxious and to be worried. But the reading once again reminds us when the time comes, the Holy Spirit will give us what we need to speak. Let us ask God's mercy for the moments where we have failed to trust in God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who adorn the sacred body of your church with the com confession of holy martyrs, grant, we pray, that just as the glorious passion of St. Ignatius of Antioch, which we celebrate today, brought, to, brought him eternal splendor, so it may be for us an ending protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ 
when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And God has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man also will acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever denies me before others, 
will be denied before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When they bring you before the synagogues, before the rulers and authorities, do not worry about how you are to defend yourselves or what you are to say, for the Spir Holy Spirit will teach you at that very hour what you are to say. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear sisters and brothers, Jesus continues to prepare his disciples for trials to come in the future. And he indicates that inevitability, inevitability of the persecution for the disciples. When we stand up for truth and justice, when we proclaim mercy and compassion, we will be faced with rejection. If he placed this gospel in the historical context, it might have been a lived experience where the believers were brought before the synagogues, rulers, and authorities for believing and proclaiming the message of Christ. So it is an encouragement for them not to give in to fear, but to stand firm in the faith. And the feast that we celebrate today, the Feast of St. Ignatius of Antioch, clearly is an example where he was persecuted, given to the lions to devour because he proclaimed the good news of the gospel. Down the road, for centuries, the believers have been dragged in front of the rulers and authorities, and their perseverance speaks of our faith today. Our faith is the fruit of their courage. Our time is not that much different than the first century Christians. They had hostility from the rulers and authorities, but for our time, we may have hostility from our own modern culture and from our own families at times. We may not face the persecution and suffer severely for our faith, but there will likely be times when we may find our religious beliefs and practices ridiculed and made fun of. We can be tempted at such times to go into the hiding to conceal our Christian identity. Even though we may not face harsh persecutions as the early church, we do have our own share. Today, more and more, it is becoming hard to proclaim Christ in the secular world, where people's individual freedom, choice, and liberty are more important than the good news of Christ. In this scenario of ours, we are challenged to acknowledge and take Christ into the world. For sure, the task at our, at our hand is a challenging one, especially to the 21st century. It never was easy at any period. It will never will be easy as long as the world stands. We might face ridicule. We might face rejection. We might be cornered. But the word of God comes once again. Do not worry about what, how you are to defend yourself or what you are to say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that hour what you are to say. We are called to proclaim Christ crucified. We are called to proclaim Christ being raised every day of our lives and through every act of our lives. Through our baptism, our parents accepted this call to proclaim the message of God, and through our sacrament of confirmation, we opted to be a messenger of God. But the question is, how far are we fulfilling the call that we have received? The first reading we heard St. Paul thanking the believers from Ephesus for their faith and perseverance. He prays and blesses them, saying, The Father of glory may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, 
you may know what is hope to which he has called you. The encouragement that St. Paul gave to the people of Ephesus is also the encouragement that he gives to each one of us. Paul prays that they know God, that they know they grow in the knowledge of God. Paul is praying that they may be enlightened by God so that they can see the hope of their calling, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. Yes, dear brothers and sisters, even though it is hard, it will continue to be hard to stand up for what we believe. We are called to endure keeping our eyes on the reward that is promised. May the Father of glory give each of us the spirit of wisdom that we may continue to glorify the Lord and spread the good news of the gospel wherever we are. Let us bring forth our prayers and petitions. Let's pray for ourselves that we may persevere in our faith, even though we may be faced with a lot of rejection or hostility, that we may continue to remain fervent in our faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have fallen away from faith because of modern culture or whatever reason, that they may continue to experience the goodness of God and that they may return to the faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering and those who are homebound, still they are not able to experience the goodness of God, may we, each of us, be a messenger of God's good news to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all of those in the daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, we pray that during this time of thanksgiving, we be grateful for all our gifts and be willing to share our goods and talents with each other. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we bring before you all these prayers, knowing and trusting you always listen to us, your children, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice and yes. for the praise and glory of His name, for our and good of all His holy church. May this oblation and our homage be pleasing to you, O Lord, just as you accepted St. Ignatius, the wheat of Christ, made pure bread through his martyrdom and passion, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr, St. Ignatius, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness. 
and so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, all the clergy and the people of God you have gained for your own. Remember also brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Of the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope on the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Yes. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. With those of you at home, join with me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the heavenly bread we have received, O Lord, on the feast day of St. Ignatius, renew us, we pray, and make us Christians in the name and in deed. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Remember, if you can't sponsor a Mass, any contribution, no matter how small, will help keep Daily Mass on television and you'll receive an income tax receipt for your donation.